What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sick Eric Tech, and today we're going to be doing a little side by side comparison between the new One UI 6 and One UI 5.1.1. This is the Galaxy S23 Ultra, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5. And we're just going to be running through some of the changes in the settings and look at the differences between the two and see if there's any difference at all. So let's go and jump down into it. So there are some key features that I do want to try to touch on, and that is uh, some of the camera changes, a little bit in the gallery, animation seems to be smooth, and music timeline when playing music. So as far as the first thing to go is going to be the quick toggle setting right here. As you can see, totally different from what it used to be before. This is the new, this is the old right here. And there is definitely a huge difference in the way everything is set up. As you can see, you do have the option to edit now. When you were to go over here and edit, you'd have to click on there, then click on the edit buttons, and then it will bring you to your edit screen right here. Now you just click on the little pin up top and it will give you the options to do it to when it's at the top, which will be when it's like this and the option to do when it's expanded which you could do right here. You could move everything around. When it's full, you can move everything around as well. You could do instant access, which will pretty much swipe down when you swipe down on the right-hand side. When you swipe down on the left-hand side, it'll just bring it down halfway and then bring it down the rest. But over here, it brings down everything all at once, which is pretty cool. Brightness control, you could either have always show or show when the panel is expanded. And of course, your device controls and media outputs and things like that. And that pretty much looks how it's supposed to look over here. And as you can see the differences between the two, you have your device control media output up here, while over here you have it up top. And then your brightness is going to be all the way over here. And I wish they did include or put the uh, most used ones at the bottom since, you know, that's going to be easier access, but it is what it is. But yeah, this is a side by side on how things look. You're going to go into the settings right here. And this is how they look. I just want you to get an idea of the animations as well. So if we were to go home, there you go for the animations. You click on the camera, go home, your folders, see how that looks. As far as the animations go, swipe down, settings, settings. So yeah, cool animations. They seem a lot smoother on One UI 6. Going into connections right here. Here is how everything looks. As you can see some of the uh, little um, areas aren't quite fixed yet. As you can see the line right here for the toggle and then the line over here for this toggle, it's sort of offset a little bit. So you expect some things like that not to be aligned correctly. But here is how the connections look when you swipe down. Pretty much almost the same going back. You go into connected devices and here are connected devices as well. Little differences in the fonts too, but everything seems to look almost the same. The icons look almost the same as well. And the toggles, again, a little bit different with the toggles. You get your decks over here. Of course, no decks on the Z Flip. And then you go back. Modes and routines, as you can see right here, pretty much almost the same when it comes down to how they look. And then going into sounds and vibrations. Again, pretty much almost the same on how things look. Going to system sound, system sound, pretty much almost the same. And then going on number two, sound quality and effects, your Dolby Atmos. Again, pretty much the same when it comes down to how things look. And your equalizer, again, almost the same. So that's pretty cool. Nothing has really changed there. For vibration intensity, uh, you get thicker lines over here for your bars as far as adjusting call volumes. So that looks a little bit better right there. Everything's vibrating. And then uh, separate app sound uh, for the most part looks pretty much the same. And then now let's go ahead and go into display to see how things have changed. Again with that uh, brightness bar has been changed as well turn off auto brightness so it's a little bit thicker over here than it is over here dark mode settings turn on as scheduled all the little animations seem to look the same brightness extra brightness motion smoothness 
again with the same adaptive everything pretty much looks the same your fonts you get a little bit of a new different font when it comes down to Samsung go ahead and change that to default you also have the bold fonts if you want to do that as well camera cutouts if you want to do camera cutouts and that's pretty much it for that going back into let's go ahead and go into themes see if the theme store has changed and pretty much looks the same for the most part go ahead and go back wallpapers and styles and again pretty much almost the same when it has comes down to that change your wallpapers there you go for how that looks pretty much identical if you want to change your home screen wallpaper you can do so as well and then your color palettes pretty much the same lock screens uh, if you go into uh, lock screen over here again pretty much the same your pins your all your biometrics will be in there as well and then uh, software update pretty much everything else is going to be advanced features for your labs of course you get more labs over here than you do on the s23 and then your bixby and things like that everything pretty much looks the same it's just the alignment of some of these toggles it's a little off but i'm pretty sure that will be fixed on the next update this is a beta so another thing i wanted to touch in are the toggles for or the widgets for your camera now now you got widgets for your camera which you can quick launch so i got two of them right here i got quick video and camera so if i want to launch a video I can go ahead and click on it and it'll take me straight to video and then I can start recording. If I wanted to quick launch the camera, I could go straight to the camera and start taking pictures. And that is pretty much going to be under widgets and camera right here, which will give you the option. You click on that, you add it to your home screen, and then you can add a photo to the background and design, you know, the name of it and what you want to start doing once you click that you can choose from between your rear or your fa front facing camera and you could choose either portrait video pro any of these different modes in your camera and once you click on that it'll take you straight to that which is pretty cool in my book and those i do have up there as the uh camera app goes you do have some changes up here up top so now you have the option when you click on your aspect ratio it does look a little different as far as clicking over here it actually just gives you the numbers without the little box around it which is pretty cool and then your resolution for your photos you click over here you can't really get to that if you want to get to your resolution for your photos you got to click over here and then get back into there here you click on it and it'll give you the option for 250 or 12 megapixels which is actually quite cool and then if you go into uh, video which we go into video right here again the stabilization has been replaced by a little running guy while over here it has you know the old you know one ui has a little wavy hand over there now stabilization super steady is different you click on your aspect ratio you can pick your aspect ratio as well you click on your resolution over here now you got more of a detailed uh setting for your resolution while over here it's kind of small on the old on the new you get your 8k UHD, 4K, Full HD, and HD. And once you click on all these, it'll give you the frames per second at the bottom as well. While over here, you just pretty much gotta go to whatever they had up there. Pretty cool when it comes down to the camera app. As far as going into the settings, you do get your advanced video options as well. And this does look a little bit different. Now, when I did this update, it was set automatically to high efficiency, which I do not like using. And I had to switch that. So now you get your zoom in mic. And things like that high bit rate over here high efficiency hdr10 and all your normal settings over here for that you do get advanced picture options you also get the advanced intelligent options which will give you options on how fast your shutter speed will work so if you pick the maximum it will pick the absolute best way of shooting a picture medium will speed up the capture by doing less optimization minimum will take the fastest picture possible without optimizing your picture. So this is for quality. If you just want to jump out and take a quick picture, uh, you might want to choose the minimum. But if you want the picture to be optimized well, 
maybe choose the medium and that will give you the balance between snapping the photo and it processing it which is however long it takes to process the picture i would choose the medium and then you also have your scene optimizer down here as well you got your um, your watermark right here which has changed so if you were to turn on watermark compared to over here turn on watermark you could also choose the alignment which over here gives you a lot more different options for alignments for your watermark you could change it all over the place if you want while over here it was just left center right over here it's left top center right and you could go to the bottom left center right which is absolutely pretty cool that you have more options for your watermark if you use things like that if you don't then that does not mean anything to you now going into the gallery app which you guys are going to see some photos over here so if you were to go into your gallery app and click on a picture say for instance that one and then let's go ahead and go to this one now when you swipe up on the old one this will give you all your information of the photo it'll give you the resolution the iso the time the date of when this photo was taken now over here on a new one you click this little icon down here and now it will give you everything on there and options to remaster portrait effect object eraser and things like that so that's pretty cool and then when you want to edit everything the edit processing looks a little bit different as well as you can see right here all your editing right here is totally different now you get more detail you could automatically edit things auto adjust object eraser while well, over here you got to jump through a little bit more hoops to get through all these settings on the old one so the new one is definitely a lot better and easier to edit so that's really nice that it is a lot easier to get to when you start editing your photos so that's pretty cool and then that little shortcut is going to be pretty cool when you're swiping up instead of just swiping up you just click on that little icon to get all your information and options to edit that video so as far as playing music on here let's go ahead and see if we can find some music to play and we will turn down the volume that way we do not get any copyrights on here but i wanted to show you guys a new media player on here so with the new media player, when you swipe down over here, this is the old media player and this is the new media player. As you can see right here, it does give you more of that wavy line on there, which is pretty cool. A lot like Google's uh, media player on Android 13, while over here on the old one, it's just a straight line. And I definitely prefer this one more just because it looks cooler and it has that more of an effect on there. And of course, as you can see, the wallpaper fully takes over while over here you just get the album cover in the corner while over here it is pretty much the whole widget on there now it does have to be expanded in order to see that while over here that looks the same right there when you expand it further it still doesn't fill up the whole area while over here you expand it then it does i kind of wish that it had it expanded by default rather than having to take that extra step to uh get to your music and then of course on your lock screen this is how things will look of course this will be more expanded but it does have another notification on there when it comes down to that but yeah very cool for that media player it actually looks really nice and i'm definitely digging it now as far as any other changes everything always has to do with the speed and everything when it comes down to performance on here so one ui is definitely going to be a little bit more smoother on one ui 6 over one ui 5 another you can change right here as you can see that the uh your little profile pic is a little bit bigger and sticking up a little bit now is that a defect or not out of alignment who knows but there's another change right there so yeah those are pretty much all the changes that i could see for one ui 6 and uh, android 14 for the new galaxy s23 ultra compared to one ui 5.1 which is the galaxy z flip 5 and uh, hopefully I did not miss anything when it comes down to changes. I'm definitely liking this. It's that time of the year that we get a new refreshing look from Samsung and I'm definitely excited for it. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down and I will see you next time here on Sick Eric Tech. Peace.